Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Welcome to this rest and worship Saturday and also to the Sabbath chat. Now today because of the topic and the nature of the video, I will be joining both videos together, okay? So if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe, okay? And um, check out the playlist on both YouTubes. This one is Shula Ministries Overcomers Anonymous. And the other one is, well, still Shula Ministries, but it is the Pursuit to Christ. Okay, and so because on Shula Ministries Overcomers Anonymous, we're basically dealing with a 90-day series that's entitled titled, The 90-Day Destiny transformation where we're starving our past and basically uh, feeding feeding our future our destiny and accepting the life that Christ died for us to have excuse me I'm trying to get a good view here and so anyhow so okay so on the sab the Sabbath chat what well, a pursuit to Christ on the Sabbath chat which is today is Saturday the Sabbath chat is the Sabbath we deal with basically like whatever it is that I discuss during the week on Tuesday and Thursday. And basically what it is, is basically solidifying the fact that Jesus is the one that can bless us, deliver us, and heal us, and ultimately save us. And so I want to basically um, give I guess I could do four testimonies and basically Hallie saved us too, but that wasn't originally included. It was basically heal, deliver, uh, and bless. But, um, you know, I will, I will include uh, saving too because, you know, some of us is still looking for a rescuer and some of us are looking in the wrong places, perhaps in the opposite sex, you know, perhaps still looking for mommy to daddy to do it for you. You know, perhaps still looking for um, possibly a job or something like that. But whatever the case, you know, I'm going to address these issues right now, right here in this video. So, okay. So, if that sounds like something that you, you feel like you may be interested in, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get a good view here. Um, stay along with us, okay? And so, for anybody who do not know, my name is Sheila Rollins and... I am the founder of Shula Ministries Entertainment and Associates Inc. And we do what we do on this YouTube basically because of Jesus Christ being a higher power and also what he's accomplished for us on the cross. Okay, so um, like AA and NA, although all of those are uh, not profitable, but what's the word that I want to say? Successful. Shula Ministries is successful well because while with NA and AA, you can choose whoever you want or whatever you want your higher power to be, and it has been successful. However, I don't know in which part is it successful. Um, I, would, I would venture in to say with those people that um, choose God or Jesus as their higher power, okay? Um, and so basically, um, you know, that's the thing that makes us successful is that we choose Jesus Christ as our high power and everything that he has done for us and that he's accomplished for us on the cross. So no doubt about it, no doubt about it that, you know, Jesus is the one that can bless us with the things that we're looking for. So, okay, so remember in order for us to get all that he's offered, we must um, be obedient to his word. And I encourage the King James Version, and I encourage you to get the reading, okay? Um, Old Testament in the evening, New Testament in the morning, and I like to mix up a little bit of uh, Proverbs with the New Testament and Psalms with the Old Testament and possibly read a little bit of Isaiah and um, I like to read Hebrews too in the afternoon just a chapter y'all just a chapter and you'd be surprised as the days pass how your knowledge will increase how God be, will begin to take that word to convict your heart and to your mind and it would draw you closer 
to the Lord. Take me up on that challenge. So, okay, so let's get started. So I thought it was a good idea, just in case that I may have some skeptics out, about the, out there that is not too sure that this thing called Christianity really, really works, even though you know, you have a lot of people that accepted Jesus, not just as their, their Savior, but also as their Lord. And the Bible says, why call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do what I say? So basically, these are the people that are invested in doing what God says. And as a result, while he sends his reign on the just and the unjust, okay, um, his blessings, his huge blessings, and ultimately eternal life is only going to go to the believers. Now, believers is an action word. In other words, you can't believe and sit on your hands and not do anything. You got to get to work. Now, when, for the most of us, when Jesus became our Savior, he was basically wooing you. Perhaps you felt this gentle spirit kind of like leading you or, or guiding you, or you felt the spirit with you. And as a result, one day, the spirit, that spirit, you know, you met that spirit. And as a result, you gave your life to Christ. I know that's how it happened to me. I was invited to church. And that spirit that was leading me and guiding me, it's like they came together all in one. And I was like, oh, God, you mean that was you? You know, and so I come to give some testimonies about, um, and these are personal, all right? So I don't mind you sharing the video, you know, encourage subscription as you share, because it is my life that, I am happy that God is using to help bring you a little bit closer, you know, to him, you know, strengthening your belief a little bit more, your faith in God so that you can have confidence, hope, um, obedience, you know, and your help may be in God. Okay, so let's get started. So, all right. Um, so, first of all, I'd like to say that um, in the way of like blessings, and I would say this was probably one of the first ways that um, that I start to become a, more acquainted with God, okay? Blessings. And so, you know, I, I had a, um, a bad experience in my life. I was about, uh, I guess I was 17. I'm still in high school. And, um, you know, I got tossed out of my house. And, and I give my testimony about that. So... Um, in other videos, any but, but anyhow, I got you know thrown out of my my family home, and I really had no place to go or anything. And um, you know, the person that threw me out, which was my mother, she didn't. She was trying to get everybody mad at me to, you know, to not open the door for me. Um, I guess so that I could be having a hard time on the streets, you know, or whatever. And what I was accused to for was not the truth. God knows, here's my hand of God, was not the truth. But however, Jesus suffered being innocent. So who am I? So okay, I'm totally okay with that today. As a result of that experience, I met God. So God had begun to woo me, you know, do nice things for me, bring me around people that would help me. You know, um, I became, the Lord blessed me to become, um, he blessed me to become not an award of the state, but an emancipated minor where I was able to live free as a minor at 17 years old. As a result, I was able to stay focused, you know, to get my high school diploma, still take care of my daughter. You know, the Lord blessed me with apartment. And at that time, I got food, uh, food stamps and a welfare check. I'm 17 years old. I had nothing left over as a result of, you know, paying my, my rent, which was at that time a little efficiency apartment. But guess what, y'all? It was for me and it was for my child and God had blessed me with that. So lo and behold, one of my friends had quit her job. It was Pat Howard. Thank you, Pat. She quit her job and the boss asked, do you know somebody that's reliable, responsible, you know, um, caring and all those different things that can work here at the nursing home and she referred me and as a result the lord blessed me 
with that job. So now I was not only just able to pay my rent, I was able to put clothes on me and my daughter's back, you know, pay my gas and electric bill and buy the little other things that we wanted and needed. Hey, that's God, y'all. You know, so um, comment down before, down, down in the comment section, which is right under the title and leave your blessing story. Okay, so let's move a little bit further into our deliverance story. And so, um, and this is a hard one, y'all, because look, I'm telling all my business, just all my business, okay? But anyhow, it's for the glory of God. And I want you so much to have a stronger belief in God, to know that it ain't just, these things are not just happening in the Bible times. Because certainly when I talk about blessings, you know, I can talk about Solomon, how God blessed Solomon with riches and, and where, you know, where God has said, you know, I have you as king. Is there anything I can do for it? And Solomon asked for wisdom and how he could lead the people. And I don't know what else he asked for, but it certainly was the riches, but God gave him riches as well okay so i could have talked about solomon but i wanted to give you a personal testimony so these are all personal testimonies i don't care if you tell my business if you pass it along and all that kind of stuff but let me go on to my deliverance story okay and so basically in my deliverance story you know um at 13 years old I was raped and as a result of that for about maybe 30 or 40 years after that uh, I was sexually active I really wasn't what I would say is promiscuous because promiscuous is basically that you have sex with anybody you know um, but it was just that one of the things that my mother one of the things that my mother said that I should do is to like not have sex before marriage. But when I was in a predicament and sex was forced on me, it was really kind of like out of my control. But I felt trapped because I couldn't tell my mother because that happened to me. And, you know, long story short, I was in a place that I shouldn't have been, but it was peer pressure. You know, and like I said, I felt trapped. I stayed in a situation. And so sex continued to happen. And so now with this, Satan had promised me that this is how I get a man and keep a man. And I was like, oh, so that's how my mother and father broke up? Because mommy wouldn't get daddy sex. You know, so after a while, when sex gets a little bit comfortable and your partner gets a little bit comfortable, you kind of loose on, a little bit on your, your, your boundaries or the rules and stuff that you govern your life by. And so while that began to happen, you know, it was like guilt and shame. Never, I was never able to loose myself on that or how I felt like dirty or unclean after that. So what did I do? I cried out to God. Because I'm saying, God, there has got to be something better out there than that. I mean, come on. How many men am I supposed to sleep with, you know, in order to get a man to marry me, to love me, and to, to stay with me? And so I cried out to God. And my last sexual partner, where the Lord was strengthening me and where I was able to say no, okay, um, was my ex-husband. And so a little bit after our divorce, we continued to have sex after that. You know, it was like I was still not quenching my desires the way that I should, okay? And so I needed God to help. Now this is why, you know, I don't believe in like um, uh, sex outside of marriage because if you take a coin and one side of the coin was all about sex in marriage, which God ordained. And the other, on the other side of the coin was all the other sex. Now, sex outside of marriage is called fornication, okay? And the other side of the coin, the wrong side of the coin, all of that, it falls under fornication and also 
incest, sexual abuse of children, rape, and all that kind of thing. Lord, I'm on the wrong side of the coin. Okay, so so I've been I had asked God to help me to say no, to help me to say no. Now I would call my ex-husband when I wanted to, but when he would call me, I would not be available. But it got to the point to where one of those times we came together on that. He wanted it, I wanted it too. But then I had asked God to help me. So when he made his proposition. I was like, no, no. He said, what you say? Because see, I had never denied him before. I was his wife, but guess what? At that present time, I wasn't his wife. And so the more he asked me what I said, the no got stronger and stronger because y'all, I was calling out on God. I needed deliverance, okay? And so I had the fear on me that if I didn't do it, the devil said, if you don't do that, you won't get love, affection, and attention. And you know how important love and affection is and attention is. But the thing I was looking at it was that I didn't need it to live. It wasn't food. It wasn't water or something. I didn't need it. You know, I needed food and water, but I didn't need sex. Okay, and so basically, you know, I begin to call out to God, and the Bible tells me that that God has even sent Jesus to deliver those that even because of fear was basically bound, you know, was subjected to death, like basically all their life because of fear, and there was a fear there because, like I said, the thing that was I was dealing with was that. You know, that merged on me was the fact that about my parents being broke up, like, and why, and, you know, how I felt about that, and how I wanted a daddy for my children. And so it made me feel like I had to do this, you know. And so basically, the Lord was impressing me that, no, you didn't. No, you didn't have to do this. So I called out to him, and guess what, y'all? God delivered me. Okay, and it's not to say I didn't fall after that because I did. Gotta be honest, I did fall after that, but guess what? God delivered me again. Amen. Amen. So so basically, um, you know, um, it's it's Sabbath, but I really cannot talk about uh the food fundraiser. So I'll just do the Sabbath verse. This is Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 8 to 11. And that is, and I will encourage you to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall I labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. And so basically regarding the Sabbath, the Bible says that in Hebrews, that there remains a Sabbath day for the people of God, or the day of rest is called. And if Jesus had thought of changing it, he would have told us, but he didn't. And then, in, I believe in Isaiah 66, 23, it says that we'll have the Sabbath even in heaven. This is the day ordained by God, okay? So I hope you're having a great Sabbath day. And I know that I have to talk about now um, a testimony about healing, okay? And so, um, and this is like off the cup, you know, and so... You know, I'm going to tell you about a healing story for myself. I can tell you about a healing story about each and every one of my children, okay? But I'm going to tell you about a healing story for me, you know, where I hear. So, okay, so I did blessing, I did deliverance, and now I'm going to do healing. And I forgot the other one that I was going to say. Oh, oh, rescue, rescue. Okay, um, the last one that I did, it was a little bit of rescue too, but it's deliverance. Okay, okay, that's okay. Don't worry, I can I can do something on um, on rescue. Um, so okay, so a healing story. So you know that you know I had a car accident and um, I sustained some injuries. 
okay I had something with my sacalolia something that is in the back of me like on my um, my pelvis but in the back of like like my hips you know and I was like really really in a whole lot of pain I mean to the point to where my leg was hurting and I believe that it was it was both legs but however it was more of like my right leg than my left leg and sometimes how many of you know that sometimes God needs us to cooperate with the healing it's not always that he sends a miracle and also um, like you know like he did with the blind man take a little dirt from the ground and spit on it and put it across his eyes or you know like the woman that had the issue of blood allowed that she would touch the hem of his garment and then you know virtue and healing come out of her you know sometimes it's other things that we need to do and for in my case god blessed me that you know i was sent to physical therapy and as a result of being phys to at physical therapy the lord healed me to where you know, where I was paining to walk and then I would have to stop if I walked a, a little bit this, I don't know, maybe half a block. I would have to stop because I had the pain in the back of my, you know, my, my top of my buttocks and, you know, my leg and that kind of stuff. And of course I was praying. I could give you a whole lot of stories about healing, but I want to give you this one because I have even helped other people with this one person I wasn't able to help. And I don't know whether she didn't have the faith or whatever, but I helped a couple else people, a couple other people in the name of the Lord. But anyhow, so when I would go to therapy, what they would do is they would have me sit down and I would have to pull myself the opposite way where they pull my leg towards them. And I would have to, you know, hold back, you know, and pull myself, um, like I said, the opposite way of which they was pulling me. And so what happened was, you know, they would pull my leg it was like bone on bone, okay? Um, up in like the joints, you know, like near my thighs and all that. And so when they would pull my leg away, I was able to get relief from that pain of that bone being on bone. And so where I would have probably needed eventually like a surgery or something like that, and they would pull on, you know, both legs. And so initially, um, I would have to go back like once a week or something like that and they will pull on my leg now I know that now that it has been since 2019 it's 2022 y'all now y'all 19 20 21 22 three years one for the father one for the son and one for the Holy Ghost hallelujah hallelujah you know and so um if this is helping you, if this is really increasing your faith, that your hope, your trust, your faith, your confidence, and then later your, your obedience may be in God, comment down below, okay? And so, um, you know, again, I'm going to tell you uh, a rescue, a rescue story. Now, I had told y'all sometime before that I had married the man that God told me three times himself. And then eight times telling me through somebody else, including three children, that he did not want me to marry this man. Which individ it basically ended up basically separating my family because I had to send my daughter, my oldest daughter who wasn't his, to her family, her father's family, a lot, especially like on the weekend. During the week, I kept her home to help her with homework and stuff like that. But it was so much arguing and fussing and fighting in that marriage till I could not stand to have my daughter around that kind of confusion because we weren't used to that kind of confusion okay and so you know I send her away thinking that what some people say with Sheila the first three years of marriage is really hard so I believe that but when I seen that things was not getting better and that I was changing as a Christian and it wasn't for the best you know, that I could curse him out, you know, threaten to try to kill him and you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, he would be physical and verbally abusive and it was just a bad, really bad situation. And, and y'all know that 
later on, even worse things happened to this because this man ended up molesting our youngest daughter, which is his own child. And so, um, and so, um, the Lord has blessed me in that because when I saw and I accepted that it was never God's will for me to be in this marriage. And it was, it never was God going to um, help me with it because why would God help us with something when he told us not to be a part of it, not to do it? He's not invested to help us. And so I asked God, bowed my head, called out to God with all of my heart, mind, body, and I, my spirit. I called out to God and I said, God, get me out of this. And for anybody else that's out there that's dealing in an abusive relationship, even if you're married, you do not have to stay in that. Ezra chapter 9 and 10 talks about basically like when we marry an unbeliever, that God gives us, um, he gives us a way out of it. You know, when we marry an unbeliever, according to Ezra chapter 9 or 10, we are to divorce that person to get back to God. And so as a result, this is where I am and how I got to the place to where I am in my life today, you know, by getting out of that situation and getting back with God. And as a result of this, and that's how I can stand as a testimony that the Lord will rescue you. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will deliver you and the Lord will heal you, you know, uh, okay. And so, you know, we have to remember that we belong to God. We were created for his glory, you know, and so anything that we bound by, no matter what it is, God has already made a way through Jesus for us to be delivered. All we need to do is accept it. All we need to do is accept it. You know, and so like on my YouTube, On the Pursuit of Christ, I sang a little song and I'm going to sing it now. Okay? Because like I said, I want you to be encouraged. I don't mind putting my life out there. Okay? It's okay with me. So, okay, so I can't look at my guests while I sing this song, but I'm going to sing a little bit of this song because I believe wholeheartedly God has showed me that is true, okay? So, here we go. There's no secret What God can do What He's done for others He'll do for you With all wide open he'll pardon you there's no secret what God can do so okay so we have to remember that there's a war going on for your soul Jesus is the only name given among men whereby we can be saved, choosing before it's too late. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. I love you. See you in the next YouTube.